This is the FM Gold Channel of All India Radio. In the program News Analysis, now we bring you a discussion on growth rate and inflation. The participants are Rohit Bansal, CEO, India Strategic Group, and Professor Shivaji Sarkar, Economic Analyst. Inflation and growth, they have somehow got almost at the same level. Inflation is going up and up, and growth is somehow coming down and down. And this has become a concern almost for everybody. Now, Mr. Bansal, we are seeing that the way this inflation is really rising every day, it has become a problem for everybody. And the government is also facing the heat particularly because its tax collection is also hit quite a bit. Now, in these kinds of scenarios, and especially there are some other problems that we are seeing every day, all kinds of production, every level in the industry is coming down. And somehow the most neglected agriculture has come to help. Now, in these kinds of scenario, the problem that everybody is seeing is that a sub-5% growth. And now, every time it is being said that growth will go up, Prime Minister is saying it, everybody is saying it, but somehow the growth is not catching up. But inflation, even at the retail level, has gone beyond 10%. So what's the solution? If I had a solution. But I must uh, just point out that there is tax buoyancy. So to a limited point you make that tax is also being affected. Tax buoyancy, there are signs of uh, that. To make a very uh, simple assessment for our uh, listeners, often inflation is linked to what we see in the headline, which is wholesale price index based data. But what we go and pay on the street when we buy anything is actually what is consumer price index uh, at best, even if we don't poke holes in the CPI. So effectively, when you say that inflation is worrying, etc., I must add to your concern that it is not merely the wholesale price index, which is also growing, but most certainly what really affects you and me is consumer price index base, Absolutely. which is going at a higher level than WPI. That said, there are ways in which there are fiscal tools and monetary tools. Fiscal tools are with the government. Monetary tools are in the hands of the Reserve Bank. So the monetary tools typically are used to inject more money into the banking system and to tinker with the rates at which the RBI lends. Or withdraw it. So accordingly, we try and make sure that some of this inflation management is done through monetary tools. But it is very important to recognize that Finance Minister has very truthfully, in my opinion, said that hand for monetary tools is very limited now. And therefore, management of inflation with the other tool that I talked about, which is fiscal tool, is very important. And there, essentially, it comes down to how much money the government earns and how much it spends. And if it overspends, is it spending that money, if at all, in physical and capital generation or uh, infrastructure generation? Or is it using it for subsidies, paying salaries, and in a word, paying for itself. Exactly, that is exactly what is happening. Most of the government expenses that should go into really to boost the economy, the, as you said, infrastructure and various other activities, even the plan activities somehow is being somehow cut because government also has to take care of the fiscal deficit, which is also going at a very high level. Already government has almost spent 84% of what, whatever is budgeted for 5 lakh crore borrowings. Now that means the government has already taken almost 85% of the borrowing. That means almost, uh, you say, 80 crore or so, it has already been taken. Away. So in these kind of scenarios, for the government, how to control the expenses, that itself is, a, I think, is a real problem for the government because it can't cut salaries. It can't cut its uh, all standing expenses. Of course, it can look at uh, some of the unnecessary perks that it is giving to some of its uh, officials, but that is also not possibly possible for various other reasons. Now, whatever is happening, we have seen that growth somehow is not going up because there is also another reason possibly. And there we are also under the pressure of the WTO regime that we are unable to compromise or check the import that is coming and many of these are unnecessary imports and that is also affecting our manufacturing, be it electronic goods, be it various toys and be it many other things. So these are the, some of the aspects in the WTO regime. Government possibly understands it, but possibly it feels its hands are tired and how it can do it really. 
Well, I think the import management, definitely there's been a compression uh, relating to one fairly unnecessary item, though our women <laughs> listeners may not agree, is gold. So certain evidence of that is uh, evident already in the current account deficit, uh, which is essential in simple terms. Uh, the math between exports and imports and the calculation has been turning benign. There are certain imports which are very important for a growth-dependent economy, so we can't just discount the capital formation that comes with those imports. But I think what we can focus for the moment is that even if we know that the problem of inflation management lies in the fiscal domain more, and through that we extrapolate very simply that government's expenditure should be controlled, fact of the matter is, uh, Shivaji Saab, that the government has already announced a seventh pay commission. Not That's that the right. effects of that will be evident for some time. Though it is not also due at, uh, at the time. Core theme of growth and inflation, the growth dependence on inflation turning benign is more. Uh, you have pointed out very ably the input of agriculture that is in pretty good this time. It has crossed 4%, but it's also true that manufacturing has been lying flat on its belly. Agriculture uh, has been... 4.6% the growth in the last quarter it was. And manufacturing is, of course, you can say near 1%, but exactly not 1%. But that is exactly the concern, I see. And uh, government is very much aware, because it is manufacturing which can create quality employment. At the same time, I believe, somehow the mindset that we have, that we have not been taking care of agriculture for the number of decades, I think that mindset also needs to change. We should now realize that without agriculture, possibly, Indian economy can't sustain. Well, nobody would ever say that we don't care for Indian agriculture, but the fact is it is rain-fed, it is monsoon-dependent, and God has been kind to us, and therefore the agriculture has done relatively better. Coming to manufacturing and its role in the growth story, as well as the role of the growth story in the inflation story, is that the manufacturing is hamstrung severely, because of uh, lack of electric power. Electric power is linked to the production of uh, electricity through typically thermal generation, of which ironically we control large, vast amounts of reserve, but we have messed up the regulatory regime in a manner that coal has not been available from domestic sources. In fact, we are uh, having to import, which gets into the other logistical nightmare of evacuating that coal from the coast yard, coastal zones into electric power stations which we would have erected or coal-linked power stations which we have sanctioned some years back. So I think it's a chicken and egg thing, but let's focus also on what's positive. The positive part is that unlike many other economies of our size, we are growing at 4.6, 4.8%. On this base, certainly, we can also expect the next year's uh, base effect at least to kick in. Governance issues are important, and those have been sorted out in a significant way. Uh, government has put together a series of regulators to make sure there is level playing field between state undertakings and private undertakings. And certain products and projects typically have got bunched in the second half of the year. So while everybody will say, oh, every time we hear this video, we are told next quarter the growth will be better and so on and so forth. But I am an optimist. I would think that there is data to indicate or there are trends to indicate, uh, Shivaji Saab, that the third or the fourth quarters will certainly have better numbers. I also agree with you, Roji, that possibly the third and fourth quarter will have better results. And I think you also pointed out at fiscal measures. I think this is also the time for the government to streamline, especially the direct taxes, so for the personal income tax is concerned, with the inflation rates. So that uh, one problem that especially the manufacturing sector and all other sectors are facing, that people are not left with much of a spare money to spend on various essentials they want to buy. And one reason, of course, is the taxation rates. If that is in tune reduced with the inflation rate, Possibly some more money would be available to the people and that possibly can generate more manufacturing activities, industrial activities and possibly what we are looking at a lower growth rate, possibly that can be addressed. Of course, government has a concern on that, that it may lose some good revenue on it. But revenue then can be made it up from other activities of excise and other activities. Well, current um, finance minister, we have a proven votary of the Laffey curve. The Laffey Curve for listeners is a simple submission by an economist that if you reduce the tax rates, the propensity or the interest of people to pay the rightful due from them increases and therefore the economy of the country as a whole gains. 
Chidambaram had done it in the mid 90s when he did bring the rates down from expropriatory levels. We can say this today. Almost it was 97% right. to 30 So there was a huge disincentive to even conform to the tax regime. So having reached there, been there, I think today the tax rates are fairly, uh, they can't be brought down as I see. Tax compliance can certainly be increased. But to bring the rates down, I don't think the government has its hand full enough to do that. While all of us would love to pay lower and lower taxes, but also our demand for services correspondingly for infrastructure and the kind of essential spends that have to go to people who are less advantaged than us, who are on the margins of society, the social regime supporting such people has to ultimately come from direct and indirect taxes that are uh, levied by the government. And increasingly the contribution within direct taxes of service tax is also something which is keeping the government afloat. Otherwise we would get into a that deeper problem. I'm not saying that it is taxes at all levels, only the personal income tax, but that would give some spare money to individuals to spend. That is where, of course, it, it is almost getting choked. My sense is uh, personal money is available but is going into investments which people think inflation proof. So people are, whatever little they have, they are investing, still investing I dare say in gold, they are investing in real estate which creates its own rigmarole of black and white and all that. I think what is very useful to remember is therefore the first speech of Raghuram Rajan as the governor was to say that there will be an inflation indexed bond very soon to be launched by the banks. I think that recently that his uh, promise is going to come good. In December, we will have an inflation indexed bond, which essentially allows the banks to attract our money with a greater deal of uh, confidence rather than 100 rupees being given today at an interest rate of 6 6 or 7 percent on a savings bank. Whereas on the other hand, the inflation is well above 12 or 13 percent in the consumer price index context. So if Raghuram Rajan can bring CPI or even more sophisticated metric like producer price index or something into the game, have banks come forward and attract domestic savings with greater confidence and then invest in small and medium sized uh, entrepreneurs and large infrastructure projects being driven for execution, we would be home. Well, you have given good suggestions, of course, but still, something has to be done to pep up manufacturing. We have a manufacturing policy we created almost two years back, but the impact of that is yet to be seen. Now, in these kind of scenarios, of course, we can't blame everything on inflation. It has it played it's some role, definitely, but that is, of course, not everything. One thing also you have seen, the private investors that are there, they have huge money with them, huge deposits with them, but they are shy of investing in the economy. How they can be induced to invest in the economy so that there is a real boost in the economy? Government alone can't do it. Sure, that's a measure of uh, confidence that an investor has in, a, in the India story. Ironically, there are uh, outsiders who have more confidence in the India story than some of the people who you are alluding to, who are in domestic investors, and they keep uh, beating down the investor sentiment and the stories of their investments in other economies, including big emerging markets, is uh, always splashed and they are seen to be disappointing and perhaps pulling down the mood of those who wish to invest in India. The states have to be brought on board for ensuring that people's expectation of a state as the Maibab has to go. Well, very sensitive. Well, the states have also to be brought on board and we are seeing that despite that fact that the center is trying as best as it could, the states are not coming to that level of activities which they should come and really promote the entire growth prospects of the country. So the suggestions that you have given and the confidence that we have expressed that whatever is happening now, the next two quarters will definitely be better and 5 plus percent growth will be addressed. Thank you, Mr. Roy. You were listening to a discussion on growth rate and inflation. The participants were Rohit Bansar, CEO, India Strategic Group and Professor Shivaji Sarkar, Economic Analyst. It came to you in the program News Analysis, produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. This program is also available on our website, newsonair.nic.in. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.